Hello, this is Eyewitness Report on Channel's television. Simply put, news of the people, by the people, and for the people. So keep sending in your shots to our portal. Today, an Elijah Community School Bariga gets a makeup after our visit. The return of Olusho Sun Dump keeps Kudirat Abiola Road residents in dire straits. Join us for these and more. I'm Chris Elams. In November 2018, we visited Ilaje Bariga community in Lagos over the effect of flooding on the residents. In the course of that visit, we saw a school where the educational needs of vulnerable and orphaned children are being taken care of. Now, it was a pitiable sight as the building were in very, very horrible state. Now, after our broadcast, the corporate body followed up to give the children a better learning environment. This is Eagles Wing Community School in Ilaje Bariga, donning an all new look. It may not be as conducive as a proper school environment should look, but it's certainly way better than it looked the last time we visited. How you doing? Though it was during the wet season, the condition of the school was, to say the least, horrible. The floor was waterlogged and the belly had a proper seating arrangement. And so our visit afforded the teachers the opportunity to tell their story. There is a time like that that water used to flood the whole area. So once we start experiencing this, it's very, very difficult for the teachers and the students as well. Most of them will stay at home. Even inside their house, it's not even conducive for them. So you get, but we still have to go there and encourage them to come to school. Some of them will come without even wearing rain boots. They will come with their legs and some of them will even fall inside the water. You understand? And this has been going on for so long. And we have been trying to like see how we can get help for them. Soon after that edition of Eyewitness was aired, Lotsard, a corporate organization, stepped in and upgraded the classroom. Uh, that last time that you, you people came, it was even um, the whole community was somehow there because it was still during rainy season. So and we could see flood everywhere. Even the school we had now, it was terrible. Because I can remember how the children were walking inside the water, things weren't going. Even the teacher can't teach, they can't do anything. They weren't happy to teach the children the normal things they should teach them. But when you came, I was like some people came after that to come and help the school community. And you can see the transformation that everything has changed, the school has been painted, the floor has been everything is okay now. Even the children are happy. The children that left, they didn't want to come when they saw the school being painted and a lot of things. They came back to join us and they are so happy. Even their um, parents are happy. It's like, you know, if, it's like the, the thing changed everything. Because I can remember that even not the people that came to paint here only came. There were still people that came that brought gift items, so many things for the children during December time. They did party. A lot of things happened. So we are so happy and we hope that things like this will continue. For Miss Esther Ofundu, a teacher in the school, the effort has made a lot of difference. As you can see, there is a very beautiful difference. Like the last time I was just jumping, as in to avoid the bumps and all that. But now, I can walk smoothly and the children are so, so happy. Because as at last year, you see their legs and their sandals, dirt, mods and all that. But now, they can wear their socks and their shoes. So, it's a very, very great difference, a very beautiful one. And all thanks to you guys. Passion and care is what drive the teachers here, who barely get enough to keep body and soul together. They share their experiences with us. Teaching in this school is very stressful, number one, because of the children that we have here. Because most of them, they are not going to school before. So we take them from the, from the foundation so before they can grab something that we are teaching them. So, and the challenges that we are facing here, we are facing a lot because there are some things that we need here that the people that own this place that they cannot provide for us. Sometimes with the little that we are earning here, we do use to get something for these children. 
the day I started teaching this school, do I actually had passion for the children because the children are for orphans and vulnerable. Understand? So since when I be teaching them, I think I'll I'll be coming with the children. You understand? And do at the same time they be enjoying my teaching. And the only thing that these children only want is just passion and love. This school is meant to take care of vulnerable and orphaned children of the larger community. But funding is still a big problem for them, as what they currently get from donor agencies appear insufficient. We take care of their basic education, at least. If they are not able to go to higher institution or secondary school, we still have a basic knowledge of basic education. And also, they are also not able to feed. It's only a meal. We normally give them hot meal yeah, every day. So a child just with that, that meal that she has gotten in school or she has gotten will be the one that she's going to live with throughout the day. So they're able to get meal as well. And also we give them basic health in, a, in, in the sense that the warming. We we'll normally deworm them quarterly, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter and fourth quarter. So it's four times in a year. Yes, the school has been impacted because most of our children, after they having their common entrance, they, they always do well, and at the end they are being given promotion into secondary school. At the moment, the little they keep in their storehouse to feed the children is not safe. Then this is where we keep our food. I Only think. recently, the store was burgled and their food stuff stolen, raising the need for security to be beefed up in the locality. When we resumed school, we met this thing like this. The door was opened. The food store now is in a terrible condition. Because like, was it not last week that we were called that some people came, they went through the um, roof, just to pack the, um, the children's food, children's food, and some other valuable items for the children. So, and the way it is now, it is very terrible. And we are hoping that maybe there could be a solution like what happened to the school. So that is what we are hoping now. Because if you enter that place, you see a lot of things being stolen and other things like maybe the way they damage everything. So, and we hope that maybe God can just help through the way you came last year and maybe things can change. The traditional head of the community, while applauding the impact the renovation has made on the children, adds that they plan on getting security guards to keep the area safe. Uh, for sure. I've got the determination that, well, whenever, because we landlords, we used to hold you in meetings every once in a month. And they have decided that, well, I will discuss this matter within the, you know, landlords so that, well, security, we will have a, you know, security guards which will be guiding all these places now because of the, all these uh, hooligan boys that, you know, they don't want to walk. They'll be, you know, they'll be probably thinking about, you know, people, you know, putting, uh, taking so, something around here so that whenever we, whenever we get these uh, uh, guides, all those things will be eradicated. The children here are now enthusiastic to learn and build a better future because someone cared enough to listen to their plight and make the decision to lend a helping hand. The door is definitely still wide open.